into cloud now. Excellent. All right, we just opened the room and we'll give folks a moment or so to join us here and then we'll get started with our introductions. And then I'll turn the floor over to our team over at Values Into Action. We're just giving folks a few moments to log in with us and then we'll get started. All right, guess we'll get started here. Uh, hello, and thank you for joining the first annual New Jersey Youth Transitions Conference. My name is April DiPietro. I'm with the Camden County Care Management Organization. I will be your host for this session, which is Values Into Action. Um, and we're joined today by Amy, Christina, and Ms. Marion. Uh, in this format, all participants are muted by default. If you would like to communicate with myself or the panelists, please use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. Questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. A recording of these presentations will be available within the next few days on our website, which is www.njyouthtransition.life. This session is also being closed captioned. In order to activate the closed captioning features, please click on the live transcript button on the bottom of your screen window and click show subtitles. If you need technology support at any point during the conference, you can access our live tech support Zoom room sponsored by Richard West at ATAC. The Zoom room link is available on our website. Please be patient as there may be many people seeking help at the same time. If you are having technical difficulties, please first check your sound and try signing out and signing back in to this session before visiting the tech support Zoom room. Oftentimes this fixes the issue. Please note we have a hard stop at five minutes before the top of the next hour in order to host our next presentation. I will hand over the presentation now to Values Into Action. Thank you. April. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Schell, and I am the Resource and Development Director for Values Into Action New Jersey. Hey, my name is Christina Rapizzi. I am the Director of Support Coordination for Values Into Action. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Marion Fraterola Salino. I'm the co-founder and executive director of Values Into Action. I am a white woman uh, with brunette medium length hair, wearing uh, medium sized hoop earrings today, along with a dark navy shirt, um, sitting in front of an abstract uh, at wall, uh, also uh, bricks over top of that. And uh, my pronouns are she and her. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll go to the next slide, please. All right, well, we sincerely appreciate you all joining on this beautiful Saturday. Well, it's afternoon now, right? Um, but uh, we, we really appreciate the level of participation for this first, what will be annual New Jersey Youth, Youth Transition Conference. Um, and Values Into Action is, is proud to be a partner in this. Um, and we wanted to tell you a little bit about ourselves as we are one of the many support coordination agencies uh, providing the service of support coordination in New Jersey. Uh, we were one of the original three and we're very proud of our history here in New Jersey since 2007. Uh, we were one of the original three organizations that New Jersey chose um, as they began their journey or began their journey, if you will, 
uh, into the fee for service um, uh, world of funding um, and program implementation. Uh, before 2007, New Jersey um, itself as a state had offered case management services. And when they were uh, making this transition, into the broader world of fee for service, um, they really needed to um, establish and sustain independent support coordination services. So we are, as I said, honored to have been one of the original three. And now we're one of, uh, I think as of, as of the last count, we're one of over 185 support coordination agencies that operate throughout New Jersey. Uh, we do operate statewide. We are serving people in every New Jersey county. Um, so we, uh, we connect with people, we partner with people living in more rural areas of the state suburban as well as, as cities and urban areas. Um, one of the things that, that makes our organization different, we believe, is that we are totally tethered to our values, which are up on this slide. And we really hold you, the person using services and your family and your support system at the center of all of our considerations. And this has really been a critical feature of Values Into Action when we began. Um, and I am one of the co-founders having started the Values Into Action family of organizations in 2005 in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, since that time, we have continued to offer direct services in partnership with people with disabilities, their families and communities. And everything we do uh, there, as well as here in New Jersey, is done in partnership with people. We presume competence in everything we do, and we really seek to be good, responsible partners, seeing the person with a disability and their families, certainly as the experts of their own lives and the owners of their own experiences. We are one of the only support coordination agencies in New Jersey to be conflict free, meaning in New Jersey, we only provide the service of support coordination um, and we believe that that really enables us to stay completely and utterly focused on being the best possible provider of support coordination services because we don't have anything else to distract us. We, uh, we focus largely on recruiting and training and supporting and mentoring a team of support coordinators who really are well-versed in person-centered thinking and certainly in the skill and the art of facilitating person-centered planning. And Christina will talk more about that as she is the, the, the leader of the, of the service area. Um, and we, we really do have a great team of people, as I said, working throughout the state. And our history here in New Jersey is one where we have been very intimately involved in systems advocacy, as well as supporting self-advocates and family-based groups and organizations. Next slide, please. Speaking of systems advocacy and supporting self-advocates and family-based organizations, Values Into Action is also one of the three founding members of an organization called the Collaborative for Citizen-Directed Supports. Now, some of you may know um, some of the adult provider membership associations, and they're comprised of residential service agencies and day programs and other providers of congregate or group services. So Values Into Action, along with Neighbors Incorporated and Service Access and Management, way back in 2015, of course, it feels like a lifetime ago. It really was only six years ago. Um, but we came together as support coordination agencies because there was really no place for us as support coordination agencies exclusively to be able to really look at what are the conditions around this service? What advocacy needs to be done to make sure that this service really is paid attention to um, and working with the state to develop and maintain policies and, and practices that really set New Jersey ahead of other states in the country in terms of how they were providing support coordination services. And so the three organizations started the collaborative and we invited other organizations to join. And we realized, hmm, what's missing here? 
is the voice of people themselves and of family members. And so in 2017, 2018, we invited self-advocates and families to join the collaborative and we began holding community forums around the state. We also invited community-based organizations because you may not know, but you're probably learning through this conference that in the adult service system, when you receive what we call waiver funding, you are able to use some of that waiver funding um, as part of the goods and service service, meaning that if you want to join a gym or you want to take a music lesson, you don't necessarily have to use a disability service agency to do that. There might be a guitar studio right in your neighborhood, or maybe there's a local gym that all of your friends go to, or maybe you want to make some friends and you see that people your age are going to the gym down the street as opposed to going to the disability only Zumba class, right? So you can use uh, waiver funding to purchase a gym membership or to purchase guitar lessons or, or music lessons. So the collaborative really saw the need around 2017, 2018 to start, you know, inviting in some of these community organizations to let them know that people with disabilities were here and we can be good consumers. So, you know, we want, we want to know you and we want you to know us. Um, DDD, the Division of Developmental Disabilities, also at that time was moving towards the charting the life course framework planning tool. And um, they came in to some of the sessions too as a way to really work with people and their families about learning about this really important planning tool that we'll talk about later. But we talk about the collaborative because we want people with disabilities and their families to know that there is a statewide organization that is available to you for information, resources, and support. And the collaborative really does focus on, again, community resources, as well as helping you to understand your right to self-direct your services, some of your services or all of your services. And the collaborative also acts as a resource uh, for people to come and understand how to do that. So next slide, please. Okay. What is support coordination? Support coordination, we partner with you to help you reach your true vision and what you want for your life. So we really become your sidekick in the process and walk you through and talk you through the steps of that process. So you can talk to us about what thoughts you're having, ideas you're having for different activities, and then we can help to connect you to both paid and unpaid services. So traditionally, what was once case management has now become support coordination, but it's morphed into much more than that. It's not just connecting you to services to be utilized through your DDD funding that you would receive. It's having all conversations about every aspect of life. So who do you want to hang out with? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do when you get there? And then working through and troubleshooting any issues that you're having getting there, right? So maybe it's transportation, maybe it's the person that you're going with, um, the time of day, right? And then if things aren't working out, we're gonna help to walk you through that process and make any changes that are needed. Um, so things are uh, housing, where do you wanna live? Who do you wanna live with? Um, not thinking so much just traditional services, but do you want to get an apartment on your own or do you want to continue to live with your family? Do you have another friend that's interested in also moving out around the same time? Maybe you can find an apartment together and become roommates and then tap into each other's supports. So if maybe you don't want to live with someone um, who utilizes DDG funding, right? Maybe you just want to get a roommate put up an ad, um, see if you can find someone, maybe you know someone at your um, local community center or your church that you've gotten to know and you're having conversations about moving in, we can help you walk through that um, and get you connected to the services that can help to pay for, for housing. Um, do you wanna work? Is working something you wanna do or do you wanna volunteer? Maybe there's a local animal shelter that you wanna become involved in. 
Uh, we can connect you to job coaching services that can help build a resume, identify jobs for you, take you on those interviews, help you prep for those interviews, and then follow along should you need something when you begin working and you're not just 100% comfortable yet. Um, and what do you want to do with your, with your time? You know, do you want to take part in music classes or guitar lessons, as Marion had mentioned? Um, do you want to hang out with your friends at the park? Do you want to go to the boardwalk? Do you like going to the movies? Maybe there are um, events in your area, strawberry festivals or um, a boat event that you want to go and check out boating they can really a person can come and help you um to get to those to those activities so it's really thinking about what you want to do what supports you would need or want in getting there and then acting on those dreams that you have for yourself and putting them into practice okay. so a little bit more about what support coordinators do. So when you come to us, you come with DDD funding. So you're given a budget depending on your needs and we would help to link you to services to utilize those funds. Once we have services in place, we would continue to monitor them. So what's working, what's not working, what do you wanna change, what do you wanna add, Maybe you don't want to do that service at all anymore. Maybe you sign up for a cooking class and you realize I really hate cooking and I would rather go to the gym. So then we get you signed up with a gym membership and you're like, you know, I don't really like the people at this gym. I found this local yoga studio and the people there seem really cool. I want to get signed up there. So it's really helping you to identify what you want to do and then helping you move through that process. So nothing is set in stone. Anything can be added, subtracted at any time. Um, so if you identify a staff person to come and work with you, and at first you're having a really good time and you're getting along, and then you're just not into it anymore, we would help to have that conversation with either the person or the provider and say, you know, this isn't really working. Can we look to identify a new person to come and hang out with Becky and, and take Becky to do the things that she wants to do. Maybe you start out strong with 30 hours a week and you realize, you know what? It's too much of seeing this person every day, five hours a day. Let's cut it back down to 15 hours a week. So we can help you play with the services, increase, decrease, add, subtract, um, and go from there. I know when a lot of people, when they come from the youth world, it is very different. Um, and we are honest about that because that is something that strikes us when families and individuals come to us. They're like, wow, I have to do what? Where do I start? What do I do first? So in the youth world, you kind of are having a handheld experience through the process. With support coordination, when you reach the adult world, you have a lot of different options and that can be very overwhelming for people. So we work alongside you to help identify what's first. What do you wanna tackle first? What's the most important thing to you? Do you want to make friends? Maybe we start to look into some community resources. And then once you're feeling comfortable in that space, we can add on, you know what? Now I wanna take a music class. We get you set up once, twice a week, couple hours, and then you're like, okay, I'm confident in this. Now I want to add another day into my schedule. So it doesn't have to be everything at one time. You can pick and choose what you'd like to start with. And we do recommend that when we start working together because it can be very overwhelming. So we kind of put into practice first, second, third, what are we going to do? Um, so like Marin had mentioned, gym memberships, art classes, acting classes, yoga, horseback riding, um, different therapies, OT, PT, speech. During COVID, uh, we had realized with day programs being closed and group homes limiting 
actually no one could really visit in the beginning of the pandemic at the group home. So quickly we realized and families that we support realized, what are we gonna do now? People had put all of their energy into tr traditional services that when everything closed down, they didn't have anything to do. So what really came out of it, a blessing really, was that people realized I can do what I wanna do with my time. So we help you to self-direct your day. Those are the terms that we would use, but it's really putting into practice what you wanna do. So a lot of the folks that we're supporting that were previously in day programs, because of the closures, they had been set up with one person to come into their home, help them at home, and then take them out to different activities that they actually wanted to do. Rather than going to the same place every day, they were able to build their schedule. And we'll talk more about that um, later on in the presentation, but people realized how much enjoyment they were having by creating their own schedule and tapping into resources that they never had thought about because their schedule was already full with going to the day program, right? So by the time they got home, it's like, have dinner, go to bed, you do the same thing the next day. But what came out of it was true self-direction. And again, we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. Thanks, Christina. And hopefully people are getting, um, getting a good picture of the role that the support coordinator uh, plays in your life. And when you move into the adult system and you, you receive the waiver, the waiver funds, um, you have to have a support coordinator. So it is, it is considered you know, a necessary component um, because of the importance. Um, of, of the role of support coordinator, which really, as Christina describes, it's, it's, it's a navigator, um, it's a, a facilitator, it's somebody, I, I love the term that, that Christina used, you know, we're really there alongside you, whether walking or rolling, you know, however, uh, we're beside you. And while we don't do things for you, we are there to help advise, guide, assist, um, and sometimes just, just listen, because as Christina noted, it's a, it's a lot of information that will come at you. Um, there are many, many opportunities in the DDD system, the, the adult, uh, adult uh, service system. Um, but, you know, given that there, there are a lot of options, it also means there's a lot of information that, that can be coming at you. And, and the role of the support coordinator is really to kind of help decipher that. Um, I also have seen um, our, our support coordination team, I use the, the term translate because I think um, that's another really critical piece of the, of the support coordinator role is, you know, we are let into like very intimate details of your life, of, of a family's life. And, you know, we treat that with honor and respect. And we are really, really focused on understanding what it is you want as the person using the service, but also what's important to your family. Um, and, and knowing that those needs and those preferences can and should change over time. When I mentioned the charting the life course framework um, a, a couple of minutes ago, um, that is a, a planning methodology. It's a way of, of helping uh, people and their families look at all that's available things that are available in the disability system, things that may uh, are available in your neighborhood, your community, um, any kind of specialized kind of things that you may need to accommodate for a support need. But most importantly, what that, what that planning framework focuses on is helping, to, helping you to articulate what is important for you in terms of your your own life vision or the vision that you as a family member, maybe you're a mom or a dad or a sibling or a cousin, or maybe just a really good close family friend. And if you're part of that person's planning team, you're part of that person's system, this way of planning really includes everybody so that the, the plan um, and what gets worked on, right? really is reflective of what is important to you and what is important to those around you. 
Um, so we, we move from more of um, the system being driven by professionals and more into partnerships. We, we are one of your many partners, but we're a critical partner because we can really help, again, translate what it is you say you want, the support that you need to be able to move in that direction. Um, we facilitate the plan that then becomes the formal mechanism. That's how your funding is enabled because you have a plan that reflects, well, this is what we're gonna do with the public funding, right? And then third, the, the support coordinator then is responsible for monitoring to the quality of those services. So as Christina mentioned, if something is no longer working for you, your support coordinator who's checking in monthly, you're gonna be able to say, look, you know, nothing against anybody, but I don't really like this gym anymore. The support coordinator, okay, so let's look at maybe some other gyms that are available in your area. And then as Christina said, maybe what emerges is, I don't really wanna go work out on a treadmill. I really like yoga. That's where I wanna be. Um, so those are all of the things um, that a support coordinator can and, and should do. But there's really the, the presumption of, of competence. You are the expert. We are not the expert of your life. You are. Our expertise is used in terms of that translation, the facilitation, and then being a good partner to you along the way. Christina also mentioned, you know, values emphasis on promoting self-direction. And um, we could do a whole, we could do a whole conference on self-direction. And in fact, we're part of planning for a self-direction conference. You'll, you'll be getting information on that later. Um, but to be, to self-direct your services means that you take on some of the responsibility that an agency would traditionally do if you, if you were to choose an agency. Um, and, and so the word self may be kind of confusing because you're not out there alone to do everything you need to do. Um, the support coordinator, again, can connect you to a service called supports brokerage. And the support broker um, is really an expert in helping you to figure out how do I recruit staff? How do I be a good employer to the staff? Um, how do I make sure that I'm following all the rules? You know, so self-direction is really a, a, an important option that your support coordinator needs to let you know about. And, and one of the many things, good things with, with our organization is we make sure that that information is presented to you upfront in a way that you can understand. Um, and again, our expertise is in helping you kind of navigate. Maybe I want to start with one service. Maybe I just want to, I want to self-direct my one service, but for these other services, I may want to use um, an agency. Some of the questions that we heard yesterday were, you know, lots of times group homes are kind of presented to people as, as the only option. Oh, when you get your waiver funding, you know, you or your family member can move into a group home. That's not something you're going to hear from support coordinators uh, who are part of the values team. Um, we don't think anybody needs a group home. Not anybody. What, what do you need? That's what we want to uncover. That's what we want to learn about. And everybody's needs are unique. Everybody's preferences are unique. But there's also ways to understand what you want and need and then work to help you get as close to your vision and your dream as possible. And that's really what we do here at Values. Um, you know, there's, there's bullet points here that really get into the specifics, but it really is about acknowledging the power that you have um, and understanding what it is you really want and respecting that sometimes those, you're gonna change your mind and it's okay to change your mind. And so, Part of what we work on too in our systems advocacy is the system needs to be flexible. The system needs to be prepared at different life stages for people to say, yeah, I might have lived with this person for a couple of years and now we've both decided it's not really something we want to do anymore. So a bullet point here is the support coordinator can really help to let's figure this out. You know, where do you want to live? Who would you want to live with? Um, you know, and that includes looking at budget. You know, what, where can you afford to live? If you're going to choose this place, maybe you're going to need to have a roommate or two. But the difference is that you're in control of that. We're not coming in saying, oh, you want that? You want that service? Okay, well, you've got to go 
live over here. Um, being a part of the community, and I think Christina did a great job of, of explaining that, it's we're not just looking inward at the disability service system, we also are looking outward in terms of saying, hey, where do you live? Let's, let's look at where some resources are um, for you uh, in your own neighborhood and in your town. Lots of times in the system, we don't focus on the importance of relationships, whether they be friendships or whether they be, you know, friendships that, that become intimate relationships. And, um, you know, sometimes that's hard for families, you know, to hear, especially if, you know, their kids are young and, well, I don't know if, if my child would ever be able to understand and navigate that. Well, we're not advocating for anything other than we need to recognize that it's part of the human condition. Um, and if, if those kinds of things are important to you or important to your family member that they make a friend or um, they have opportunities to go out and meet people, we're gonna find a way to get that into the plan and, and to help you find the resources and connect to the resources that you need to be able um, to, to get as close to that, that as you want. And then Christina also focused on the importance of, you know, jobs and careers. So we're not, we don't want to be in the business of just referring people to programs. Oh, you, oh, you need something to do during the day. Okay, well, here's this program. Um, instead, we're going to talk to you about things like what are your interests? You know, you, you're just graduating high school. What were some of the things that you, you learned about or you experienced as part of your high school um, education? Let's see if we can carry on some of those things that you really enjoy doing. Maybe you even have a job that you, that you found while in high school, and we're going to help you stay connected to that and, and build on that as part of perhaps a larger career, career path. Um, we could go on and on. I'm often accused of like, Marion, you talk when no one's listening. So I'm going to stop now. Um, but again, just, just want to say how much we appreciate you all taking time on a Saturday uh, to participate in this conference. And uh, we hope that the information we're sharing is helpful. All right, we're gonna go back to that last slide. I wanted to talk uh, to you first about how do I obtain a support coordinator and get started? So when you get to choose what support coordination agency you want to work with. As Marion mentioned, there are over 185 support coordination agencies. If you choose not to choose on your own, the division will assign auto assign you to any support coordination agency, which we would not recommend. So it's best to do your research and then choose who you'd like to work with. There is a support coordination agency selection form that you would fill out and submit to the, to the division. So once you're assigned to us, then you start working with a support coordinator. We reach out, introduce ourselves, and we set up a meeting virtually or in person at this moment, on the phone, whatever you're most comfortable with. And we get started on what you need support with what you like to do, what you don't like to do, what are your likes and dislikes, what kind of people do you want supporting you, what are their personality traits, what are your personality traits, how do you communicate, how do you get across how you're feeling. So all of this information is put into what's called an individual service plan, an ISP, or a PCPT, person-centered planning tool. So once you start in support coordination, there are a lot of acronyms and we tend to talk in acronyms without realizing it. So you would just stop us at any time and say, what is PPP? And we'll go through and explain it to you and explain again if you forget. So we put all that information into two planning documents. And then this is what we are going to use to connect you to providers so that they have all the information they need to best support you. So it's a lot of information, it's a lot of sharing. Um, we make the space comfortable because it is a lot of different questions and we can also do it in bits and pieces um, because it can be you know, overwhelming. And sometimes you, you say to yourself, I don't even know what to answer to that question. 
Um, so we'll sort of guide you through that and ask you different questions to sort of get the answers um, for your plan. So you can have whoever you'd like in your planning team. You can have your family, your friends, who are the people that know you best that are, that are going to offer the best information and the most information so that we can help you to work with someone who really understands you and knows everything that's needed. And also it's great for people when they're, when they are reading your information to say, you know what, I also like to go apple picking in the fall. I also like Star Wars, or you know what, I like to watch Real Housewives and I see that this person likes to do that too. So it's helping people connect with like-minded people. So it makes their experience that much better. But again, we're walking you through the whole process, step-by-step. Step. It's gonna be a lot of information, but you just say, you know what, Christina, wait too much at one time, let's start here. And then when we have that together, we'll go to the next step. So it's really at your, at your own pace. Amy may be frozen. We might be having some technical difficulties. Oh, it looks like she's frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Do we, we can do the slide until she comes back on. Do you want me? I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do it as good as Amy does it, but. Yeah. Um, well, um, this is also one of hers. Okay. Sorry for the, for the tech difficulties. Please bear with us. So if we go back. Mm -hmm. To Christine, are you in control of the slide? Okay. I am. All right. Good, good, good. Can you go back to that last, the one before this one, I think? No, that was yours with this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So again, uh, we apologize for the, for the tech difficulties and appreciate Naomi and the others who are, are doing their very best to, to manage a, a lot of the, the difficulties. Um, as we, as we do this, we're, we're often not in control of the, the, the best laid plans and, you know, Zoom has its own plan and doesn't always inform us when, when that plan changes. So we appreciate your patience. So Amy should be back on, but in the, in the interim, um, here she comes. Um, this slide is where we give examples of the, um, our expertise in the transition space. Um, we seek to partner with resources that we know are going to be critical. Amy, you're back and you do this so much better. So take it away. I just kind of set the table. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I got kicked out. Um, so as Erin was saying, we partner with a state and system stakeholders and providers to bring transition information to the community. Some of our more popular webinars we have recorded on our YouTube channel. Um, you would um, just go to uh, YouTube itself. You can put in a search for Values into Action New Jersey, and you'll see various different webinars and information about us. Uh, the most popular ones we've got are a condensed version of a youth transition conference. So uh, Division of Developmental Disabilities and the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation Services present with us on topics of their transition um, supports that they have available, and we at Values into Action discuss in detail uh, support coordination services and ways that the budget can be used and allocated um, for authorizing different service requests. There's also a webinar on transition uh, that we co-hosted with the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. This is for uh, youth and young adults that um, have more medical involvement. Um, there's information about their program and also transitioning into adult services as well. Uh, we also have uh, contracted with Rutgers Children's System of Care to bring the community training called Transition into Adulthood, a self-directed approach. That has a lot of information and detail on how one can self-direct their services through support coordination. Um, also, we do this with system partners, DVRS and DDD, um, but in more detail than the webinar uh, screenshot that you see here uh, through the YouTube channel. And that can always be found if you're interested in joining those um, Rutgers CSOC webinars. Uh, anyone can go and attend for free. You just check out their website at Rutgers Children's System of Care. Next slide, please, Christina. Thank you. And one more, perfect. 
We have curated a transition virtual portal for you. This contains over 35 resources pertinent to transition. Uh, just note this is different than the Vendor Village virtual resource guide that is sponsored through the conference. Uh, that you're participating in today. This has curated resources pertaining to, for example, you want to see an example of the NJ cat. You can click on that uh, link there. Also in there, if you didn't agree with necessarily the budget that was affirmed by the NJ cat and determined by DDD um, to be the budget tiers, there's a sample letter in there how you can request uh, to have that reevaluated. Uh, specifically helpful to folks in this webinar might be the graduate folder. In the graduate folder, you have a timeline of where a person should be in their transition process, and it gives you the steps, the bare minimum steps, I should say, that one can take to begin transitioning. Um, DVRS has information in there on their folder about vocational services and supports, and DDD, there might even be an application on there. Earlier in this webinar, we talked about the Support Coordination Agency Selection Forum. That's how you get into uh, DDD services through Support Coordination. Um, you simply send in that form by selecting uh, one or two Support Coordination Agencies that you would like to provide supports for you. As Christina mentioned, it's always advised that you make that decision and not have um, an organization make that decision for you through an auto auto assignment in the support coordination folder is a copy of the support coordination agency selection form for you as well as a different dip, excuse me additional information on how to choose a support coordination agency that would be a best fit for you uh, you do not have to email me to request a copy of this virtual transition resource portal i will actually make it live for you all on the website underneath our um, where you registered for this workshop, instead of the registration button, it will be a resource button for you. Next slide, please, Christina. Uh, on this slide, we share that we did create the uh, New Jersey Youth Transition Conference in collaboration with four care management organizations, Camden Partnership for Children, uh, with April DiPietro, our host today, uh, Erica Rowe, Community Resource Director at Partnership for Children of Essex, as well as uh, Mammoth uh, Ocean, excuse me, Mammoth Cares with uh, Katie Calhoun and Ocean. I'm sorry, I always mix that up. Actually, Mammoth Cares is with Chad, uh, Community Resource Director, and Katie is the Community Resource Director with uh, Ocean Partnership for Children. And this conference was created um, to bring all system and state partners together. And on the right hand side here, you see a sampling of the different workshops uh, hosts that we had present for you today and yesterday. All of these workshops have been recorded and they will be available on the New Jersey Youth Transition website listed below. Uh, next slide, please, Christina. Thank you. If you'd like to stay in touch with Values into Action or learn more about us, you can check us out on our social media pages. Um, you can also check out uh, the Google excuse me, the YouTube channel, if you were to search Values into Action New Jersey, you'll see other videos we've done in addition to the transition webinars uh, that I mentioned earlier. Thank you. I see two questions in the Q&A. Um, let's see here. Okay, there are actually comments. George says there, uh, CJ Huerta is with our organization. I'm not sure who that is. Great. Good to hear. There is uh, one question that I see. Is there some kind of support to get a ride to a job from NJ to PA? Uh, my son wants to work at Sesame Place, making kids happy and uh, they care about kids with autism. He wants to be a puppeteer or character. So uh, transportation is certainly something that support coordination can help you with. Um, you know, it, it's going to depend on the person's funding and how much money they uh, receive from the division and then how far is the trip from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. Um, but what's great is there are providers who utilize Uber or Lyft, so they will help to set up an Uber for you to get to and from where you need to go. Um, it can be a bit pricey, but again, that's going to depend on, on the funding. 
but certainly is something you can work with uh, with your support coordinator. Christina, can I can I add to that too? That yeah. um, so waiver funding is is uh, is Medicaid long term services and long term services and supports, right? So um, part of how the, how that funding operates, it's it's federal standards, um, and usually in in most cases in in most states. Um, the the way that the state writes to the feds to be able to receive the that portion of the federal funding um, is the services can be provided in states that are contiguous, right? Mm -hmm. So states that are kind of right next to each other. So on the Pennsylvania side, if this question was to be like, oh, well, you know, my child wants to work at Great Adventure, right? So we live in Pennsylvania. They want to work at Great Adventure. Could the waiver cover transportation from where we live uh, to to Great Adventure, uh, Exit Seven A? Um, so we would work as support coordinators. We would work to embed that in the plan, and the support coordinator would note that obviously Pennsylvania, New Jersey, ne right next to each other. Um, you know, just say for example, you know, and um, you know, somebody said, "Oh, well, you know, we want to." you know, live six months in Florida and we want to use our New Jersey waiver funding to get services in while we're living in Florida. Unfortunately, that can't, that can happen. Uh, and one of the reasons would be that Florida and New Jersey obviously aren't contiguous. So, um, and we've had situations where there are families who say, look, we, you know, we go away for a period of time and, you know, our child needs support to be able to, to, you know, live with us or travel with us. So in those situations, oftentimes we will go and we will do our best to work at the state level to either request a waiver from that, or again, to, um, to facilitate a plan whereby we're certainly following all the rules and regulations that come along with the public money, um, but we're really doing it in a way that we get you the support um, that you need or your family member needs. So it's a great question, and it's a really good example of a question that a support coordinator would work to get you the answer or in Christina's case, because she already knows the answer, um, she can say this is an example of how it could work. So hopefully that was helpful. And I know we wanted to give some real life example of people that we are supporting currently and what types of services uh, they're utilizing and how much joy they're getting out of doing exactly what they love to do. So we are currently working with a young man who loves to act and sing and dance and so part of his plan was to set him up with the classes that he needed in order to do that. So now he is thriving and we get videos all the time of him absolutely having amazing time singing, dancing. He's been part of different plays. And so we always get little snippets of him and he is just doing amazingly. And the family himself, they're both very excited. Um, we also have another person who loves Wawa. He loves Wawa. And for a while during COVID, he was not able to go and work at Wawa. He was so excited when the bus came to the house to pick him up again to get there um, because he had started to see the school buses. So he was wondering, well, where's my bus? Because the school buses are back on the road. Why, when is my bus coming to pick me up? So he works at a local Wawa and he sets up the coffee bar. I've had the privilege of going and seeing him actually at Wawa um, in action, you know, setting up the coffee bar, wiping it down. He loves, loves, loves Wawa. Uh, we also had recently sub started supporting someone who was in need of a ramp to get in and out of their home. Um, more easily. So we had helped them to identify uh, a contractor, put the service into the plan. Um, and actually when I had called mom uh, one day, they were sitting out on the back deck that was built by the provider, which was funded through the DVD funding. Um, and they were sitting outside, relaxing, bird watching, in the sun, having a moment of silence to decompress 
Um, and we're super ecstatic that they had this new ramp and deck that was paid for by, by the division yeah. funding. So those are my three examples. I don't see any more questions. Does anyone else have any other questions you wanna quickly put in the chat? I know we have only five more minutes with you, uh, but thank you for taking the time, as Marion said earlier, for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. And I hope that you know this information that we provided today helps. Tremendously. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can always reach out. That's what we're here for. Yes, thank you very much, guys. You did a fantastic job. I hope that everybody enjoyed this presentation. Thank you again for participating and a big thank you to our speakers. Uh, just in closing, before we close out this session, um, the closing keynote speaker begins at 2 p.m. today, and that will be with Paul Aronson. Um, so I have unfortunately lost capability to end the session. So perhaps one of you are able to do that. Thank you again for the presentation and for being a part of the first annual New Jersey Youth Transitions Conference. Have a good weekend. You as well. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. See Take you care. at two.